When we talk about project-oriented programming, typically we think about defining classes and then instantiate objects from these classes, aiming to have several objects that have the same common structure. However, when we are programming with JavaScript, of course, we can also have classes defining how our objects will behave and what are going to be its purpose. However, we can create objects independently of classes. So, in this video, we are going to take a look how we could create and define objects, how we could create and access its purpose, and later on, how to define classes and then instantiate objects from these classes. So, let's initiate this overview about object-oriented programming with JavaScript. The first thing you have to know to work with objects in JavaScript is knowing how to define one object, and it's quite simple. Basically, you have to define a variable, like this one, my object, and then assign to that this symbol. And with that, we will have one object with empty purpose. We could take a look on that, printing this object in console. You could print two things. First, ask for this variable what is its type. What is the type of my object variable? And then print the my object variable directly. Now let's take a look what are going to be printed here. Just in executing that, you can see it's from the type object. You see one object without class. We don't need to use the new operator to instantiate one object. It already was instantiated here and it has no property. Okay. Now we would like to add purpose. Then we have three ways. One way is defining a purpose together with the object definition. Like I could come here and create here one purpose and its name could be, and then here the name of the object itself. So here we have the purpose name already defined. If we execute this code now, you can see we have a property with the name name and then later on we could if you want to access this property directly directly using its property name like my object and then the name of the property this way you are going to see we are going to have uh, the value of the property printed in the console. So just executing that again, you can see that here. Another way for accessing that um, is using the brackets. Okay, we have a second way for accessing variables that's very useful. That is using brackets. And it's useful because we could dynamically access the variable's name. We could set the name of the attribute in a string and then access this way as well. So no matter if you are accessing the property with the dot in the name of the property or using the brackets, the output is going to be the same as you can see here below. Okay, so let's see now how we can handle dynamically more from this Purpose. Now let's suppose you have already created one object that has one single eight boot, but now you want to add more properties on that. As you can see here, when we print the whole object, it has just one property. But what if, what if we take the object here and then add here some another, another Property, like what's the favorite color for this object and then we could assign some kind of value here my favorite color and then we could just print that again in console 
and that is interesting because if we print now the object again you are going to see that this object has one additional property now okay so different than another kind of object oriented programming that once one object was instantiated from one class no additional attribute boot can be added in javascript yes it can be added and remember functions in javascript are like variables so adding the methods could be dynamically assigned so let's take a look if you want to create one method in the object and this method will be named like say your name and this method here will have the following behavior <clears throat> like this function is anonymous no no name and then we could here just make the implementation of how this object will present itself like hi my name is then we could present here object dot here we could use also the gs keyword that already points to the object that has called the function so we could use the name property i think this is okay and then we could now in a future point in our code just call this function that is actually one method from this object so in runtime we perform one assignment of the implementation of one function to one object we could experiment that by running this code and now we have here the presentation of the name of the object using one method assigned so you haven't seen here objects with attributes and with methods next step let's take a look how we could have objects instantiated from classes now let's suppose the following i would like to have a common structure for all objects so you can do the following you could <coughs> create one class give this class one name like person and then here you could think about purpose okay it will have one name it will have beyond the name i think i have to do here the assignment you will going to have one method like say my name and this method here will be one function that will print here the name of this object okay we have one attribute we have one method and we are going to have one more thing here we are going to have one constructor okay um, constructor is a keyword from from javascript that's going to instantiate one new object from person and then we could say here we, we're going to have one parameter named name and then we have here the name of this object precision the name that's going to be parameterized here and then this way we could use classical objects instantiation like I could have here one person one receiving new person and then here we could have here one name and then we could have one second person okay and then here in the second person we could assign another name and then we could print two of these objects together to compare one with the other theoretically these two objects will have the same structure same attributes same methods but with different values because they are different objects okay so you could now just execute that again and let's see what's going to be printed here and here you have the first object with john and then here the second object with jean okay now and what if this 
second object is not exactly the same object as the first one. What if it needs to have some special kind of properties or some special kinds of methods? We need to have one in every set here from the object-oriented programming. It could be, of course, one possibility, but it's not necessarily true. We have another possibility to do that using JavaScript, considering that with JavaScript, you could dynamically increase, extend the properties of one object. So if I would like that the second object, more than the name property, have one property named age, and this age will be with this value. Now, just the object that is referenciated by the variable p2 will have age. The p1 will not have that. So let me clear that and execute again. So as you can see here, we have, let me put that above, we have the second object with this age property and the first object does not have the age property. So with JavaScript having creating objects from a same class, we do not need to have them forever with the same structure, okay? So, hope you have understood the idea of how JavaScript works with objects. What do you think? It's more complicated or more simple than with standard object-oriented programming languages such as Java or C Sharp, for example. And in case you have some doubt about demo or suggestion or having some other kind of contribution, please just write down at the comments. Thank you for watching.